Well, Durante Jones is a young and upcoming coach who was LSU's defensive coordinator this past season. We really appreciate him making the time to come down to WAFB and chat with us. Durante, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, well, I'll just kind of put the ball in your court. Um, you, you got to coach one year at LSU. I know when you came here with Blake Baker and Andre Carter, yeah. uh, you guys, your mission was to turn around that defense. And late in the season, we saw some great performances against Alabama, Arkansas, Texas A&M. Uh, how would you describe your, your one year here in Baton Rouge? Uh, very educational. You know, we learned some lessons. Uh, you have to improvise and adjust on the run. And, uh, you know, injuries is part of the game. Um, but I thought I learned a lot from, you know, Coach Orgeron. And I want, just want to thank him for giving me the opportunity. Thank the LSU uh, administration for, give, you know, for believing, in me, believing in me and giving me that opportunity. So, uh, but in terms of what I've learned, you learned so much. You know, you learned uh, the players um, and how the game has changed since I was last in college, uh, how it's different in terms of the pro game. Um, the different offenses, and, and especially being in the SEC, I mean, there's so much talent. It's like the another division in the league, <laughs> you know. But um, a lot of growing pains. But I thought it, I learned a lot in terms of uh, game planning, um, in terms of uh, adjusting, in terms of um, just dealing with any of the types of adversity that may show up throughout the course of the year. And we know that it can be dangerous to compare a team, you know, we, we don't know sometimes what team's going to show up on what, on what weekend, but yes. looking at the team that, for instance, early in the year went to UCLA and went to Kentucky, it was hard to believe that that was the same team that went to Tuscaloosa yes. and played Arkansas at home and, and A&M in terms of defense. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about the defense LSU played before the bye week and the defense LSU played after the bye week. Did yes. you share any, um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, uh, you know, we lost eight starters going into the bye week at that point in time. And we had just lost our starting nickel in Cordell Flott. And what we had left uh, were guys that hadn't played much and we had to try to utilize the talent that we had, you know, that was available to us. And so, you know, we looked at it and we thought a third linebacker on the field was probably better than the next nickel option at that time. And that was Mike Jones. And, you know, we were trying to find a role for Mike Jones throughout the year. And, uh, you know, Mike Jones, to his credit, went back to the position and the reason why he transferred from Clemson. You know, he transferred from Clemson, he wanted to play an inside linebacker, but they had him as a Sam. Well, when Cordell went down, we had to move, we had to find another Sam or some type of body type to be out there in the perimeter. And it was Mike Jones and so forth. Because of that, it allowed us to do some different things in the front. It allowed us to play more stout in the front. Uh, some would say it was a 3-4, but it wasn't a 3-4, it's just numbers. You know, we still had the same personnel up front that we had. Mm -hmm. We just changed the front a little bit and, and adjusted and aligned them differently. And then we were able to do some more pressures. And we wanted to show Alabama some things that we had not shown all year, uh, much like the Mississippi State game where we dropped eight. Yeah. Um, something that we hadn't shown all year. And it was just, you know, we had the bye week to do it. Um, and, you know, it, was, it gave us an opportunity. And so from that, we just built on that for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the season. Yeah, it, it's real simplistic, but it just seemed the overall um, opinion was, well, they sure are blitzing a lot more now than they did early in the year. And, and, and that was, you know, if you're thinking about it, in the beginning of the year, you, you felt great about who we had in terms of the initial starters, right? And you were like, okay, well, you have Ali Gay, Andre Anthony, B.J. Ozilary, you know, those guys in terms of rushing the passer. Um, so there were some, some things that we thought that, we probably only needed to rush for. Um, but then when those guys started to go down. <laughs> then you got Stingley and Ricks that then you're you have Stingley and Ricks. And, 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 and out on the air, you have Stingley and Ricks. So, we, you know, you come in into it, you're like, okay, I have those four guys. Uh, you know, you have Glenn, you have Neil up front, um, you know, you have J. Roy. Then you're on the outside, you have Ricks, you have Stingley, Cordell Flott, J. Ward just moved to safety. So now you're feeling pretty good about the personnel. And then just guys just learning the system and being comfortable in the system. Um, and then it just, one after one just started going down. Mm -hmm. And so then you have, to, you have to adjust, you know, because at that point in time, before the bye week, we still had, technically we lost Sting, we had lost Elias, but we still had Cordell. And mm -hmm. Cordell had started to play corner, nickel, and safety for us. Mm -hmm. um, but then when he went down, that was a major piece to our puzzle, especially to play, to play our nickel package. Yeah, it was, uh, it was staggering the, the, the number of guys who went down. Yes. Uh, and Andre Anthony, for example, you know, he's been patient and yes, scoops I felt, up the fumble and runs it in for a uh, touchdown. I felt and, so bad for Andre. You know, he's just a great guy. You know, he's a great guy. You, you, 
you're cheering for him. I just ran into him the uh, the other day, and uh, he's he's recovering pretty well. So I'm excited about his uh, his future. Yeah, and you know he he sticks around. Um, you know you guys are going through warm ups and games and whatnot, and obviously he can't play, but he's out there. Yes. you know trying to help out. Exactly. Be a exactly. good teammate. Yes. Um, you mentioned Mike Jones, and uh, I'll bounce around with you here, but uh, I saw him the other day. And, <laughs> Uh, at a music event, having a good time, <laughs> and uh, you know he, he'll be back. Uh, yes. He's so fast, right? His speed is such an asset. It, it, it was just kind of a, it's just a matter of him, I don't know, being tougher on the inside, or, or how would you describe it? You know, for Mike, it was different. So one, he put on weight to be inside. So when he came here from Clemson, he actually put on like 15 pounds uh, in the off season to put on the muscle to play inside. But when you're playing inside, things happen faster. Mm -hmm. You see it differently. Uh, whereas on the outside and perimeter, you can see it developing. It takes a little bit longer. And so for Mike, it was just really learning the position. Um, and to, play, to be an inside linebacker, it's tough. You know, the run game, those guards gets on you fast. You got to see the, the tailback flow, the guards track. Um, there's a lot of misdirection there. And you have a split second to pull your trigger and react. Um, and it took Mike a while doing that and getting adjusted to that because it's just new for him. You know, if, at that point, he's a freshman mm -hmm. learning a new position, you know? Yeah. Um, and he just couldn't let his instincts go because he was guessing, he was trying to figure it all out. Um, and so that's why he was in that backup role. Well, when he went to the outside, he's back at home. <laughs> you know, he's back on the edge. He can play fast. You can see his speed, you can see his athleticism. Um, and that was just him, you know, showing how diverse he is. And, and I commend him for helping us out when we needed to because when we talked about coming here, that wasn't part of the deal, playing outside, you know. But yeah, yeah. Uh, the team had a need. Uh, but Mike's a great kid. You know, he comes from a good home. Uh, you know, his father played in the league, so he has that in his, in his bloodlines, you know. Um, but, yeah, Mike's going to be – I'm looking forward to what he's going to do next year. Um, I want to talk to you about some other players who are going to be back at LSU. But I, I want to talk big picture about what happened this year – this past year. So you go to Kentucky, that game doesn't go well, and then you're playing Florida at home. Yes. Did you know before that game that Ed Ogeron was not going to be back next year? No, no, I did not know. You know, in this profession, you hear rumors, uh, but we, we, you know, we were blocking out the noise. You know, that had nothing to do with our preparation or anything. You know, guys wanted to play. Florida coming into Death Valley was a huge deal. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing I've learned. You know, I, I learned all about the, uh, the rivalries in the SEC. I had no idea that Florida coming into Death Valley was a big deal. You know, I just thought it was another SEC opponent. Yeah. But that week, I learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I learned two programs do not like each other. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, it was a shootout in Tiger Stadium, 49-42. Yes. Uh, your defense, I guess, uh, Damone Clark there at, at the end plays defensive back. I like a baseball player. He made the It was uh, great. And, and, and you know what? It was fitting for him. You know, and I think that game was just as Damone was starting to trend upward. Um, and he just exploded uh, from that point. He had flash. I thought he was flashing all year. He was making hustle plays, and you could just see each game he was getting better and better. And uh, his leadership skills, I thought, was phenomenal. Uh, we needed that, and the things that he would do in outside of practice to get the guys involved in terms of having extra walkthroughs in practice, uh, meeting times. Uh, his study habits improved so much, and Coach Baker did a heck of a job with him, you know, and he started to play so much faster because he was seeing it and he was learning the game. He was, you know, Blake was teaching them in terms of, uh, you know, running back versus alignments with the tight end and where they're aligned and what to expect. I mean, just really what we call football 101. Yeah. Um, but you'd be surprised what guys have not picked up on or have not been taught. Yeah, well, I was talking to uh, Andre Carter and Blake Baker. Dale Brown used to talk about Shaquille O'Neal. Mm -hmm. And he said he looked like Godzilla, but he had the heart of Bambi. And <laughs> And that kind of reminded me of, of Damone. I mean, he looks like the Incredible Hulk, right? But mm -hmm. he's got a, a big heart, and he, he cares about his teammates. He, he cares about his coaches. He does. You could tell he had a, he, had, he really had a special relationship with, with yes. Blake Baker yes. this year. Yes, yes, and it showed. It showed. I mean, they, uh, they would talk all the time. You know, he was, they were always meeting. You know, Damone was just hungry for knowledge. You know, Coach, how can I get better at this? What can I do? What do they like to do? You know, Coach Jones, what are you thinking? You know, what are we, what's our game plan? You know, type of deal. It was, you love that about a player. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we covered him at Southern Lab, and certainly it looks like he's positioned himself to be a very high yes. uh, draft pick in the league. So, um, so after the Florida game, I mean, uh, I'd kind of heard things too. 
Uh, certainly not enough to go out and put a story out. <laughs> uh, those are the kind of things on your tombstone. If you get them wrong, they're right there. But, uh, but I'm coming out of church, and the news starts breaking that, that uh, Coach O is not going to be back or he's uh, a mutual parting of ways or whatever. I mean, did you find out like everyone else on Sunday? We did. We did. And it was kind of, is, is it real? Like, what's going to happen? And then it, was, then it became what happens now. You know, does he finish the season? Uh, if not, who's the interim? Um, and if you finish the season, how does that work? What are the parameters? Um, and you could see how that can kind of overlap until I thought it overlapped until the next week, and I didn't think the guys could block out all the noise. Um, the old Miss game, the yes. following. Yeah. yeah. And, and I thought guys went into that game kind of uneasy uh, about what's going on. Players were, what's the future like? Um, it was just, it, it was a weird feeling, to be honest with you. Yeah. It was a weird feeling. Because typically when a coach is let go, there's a, a game left or something. Correct. There's an interim coach. Correct. Five games and an open date, that's a lot of real estate. Yes. <laughs> for a yes. guy to navigate who's not coming back next yes. year. Did yes. anyone talk to you about, hey, interim or? No, it, uh, the administration, it was kind of, uh, he's been let go. Or he, well, he's not returning next year, is what yeah. we were told. Uh, but he's going to finish up the season. Yeah. And business will go on as usual. Yeah. Um, but it was still weird because now you have coaches immediately, you know, this is about, uh, it's a business. And so when that happens, everyone, the buzz happens. Okay, hey, well, if he's leaving, what next? What does that mean for us? What does that mean? You know, people start to look for jobs. People start to, their focus changed, I, I thought. And I didn't think the focus was there. Um, and I thought the bye week gave us a chance to, gave the team a chance to refocus. Um, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. because, I mean, like you, uh, what am I going to do now, <laughs> next year or whatever, right? Um, th was it understood to you that, hey, I'm not going to be back next year no matter who the coach is going to be? Or did you feel like, hey, I'm going to perhaps try to impress somebody and I can maybe get on the LSU staff in 2022? No. Uh, you know, I, this is my 21st year coaching. Um, you know, you know the business. You immediately think when a head coach or your supervisor has been let go, you're gone. Right, and it's nothing personal. It's just a business, mm -hmm. and uh, whoever that head coach comes in, you know, he wants to bring in his own people. That, you know, he wants to bring in people that he trusts, people that he knows, he's familiar with. That's that's just a business. So no, at not at not one point in time I thought that I would be retained. Um, it never dawned on me. Um, so it wasn't a surprise when I wasn't. It's just that's the business. And to be honest with you, if I was in that position, I would do the same. Um, you know, I remember uh, a coach, a mentor of mine once said, if you ever become a head coach, the best thing that he learned in his past was to uh, fire everyone that's under his supervision and then rehire them if he wishes to. Um, and that way he can change the loyalties because that's an issue. You know, who are, you, are, you, are you loyal to the previous administration or are you loyal to me? And new head coaches, they don't know that and they have a lot to do and a lot of challenges. And so one of the things that my mentor had told me was, if you ever have that situation, you know, he recommends firing everyone and then you can rehire that way you change their loyalties. Yeah, yeah. Oh, profound stuff there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a new, a new staff is in place and everything. And uh, so moving forward, uh, and then you had to recruit too, after you know, okay, <laughs> after the Ole Miss game or after the, uh, the Florida game, this coach isn't coming back. Oh, by the way, uh, we need you to stick around, right. try to um, guide this ship to, uh, to shore and uh, try to get some players along the way too. Huh? Correct, correct. That was, uh, it was different. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, like I was telling those recruits, you know, in this profession, whoever the head coach may be or whoever your recruiting coach may be, it's going to change. Uh, chances of that person being there the entire four years of your career is highly unlikely. And so you try to stress to the fact LSU is a wonderful school, right? Uh, the history that's there, the academics are off the chain. And so you try to press upon the student athlete. Yes, relationships are important, but the school is even more important and what you can get out of being involved with the school like LSU. And I, you know, reference back to when we were coming out, it wasn't about the coaches. It was about, I want to go to this school. I want to yeah. go to this institution, regardless of who's coaching there. Right. Um, and you want to go to the U. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't yeah. know who the coaches were at that time when you were coming out. You know, you're, now the things have changed because the recruiting process has changed. Yeah. And so I was trying to enlighten the parents and the you know, student athlete about, yes, this coach may be recruiting you now. Um, but at the end of the day, if that coach leaves, will you transfer? 
you know? If you were to get injured, would you transfer? You know, so you want to pick the best place for you. And I thought LSU had that. And so I didn't have any issues recruiting for LSU because it wasn't about the coach at that point in time. You were trying to recruit um, the best student athlete to play and attend LSU, which I thought is a fantastic university. I'm not one of those uh, recruiting gurus. I keep up <laughs> to an extent, but who, who did you recruit and who ended up signing that you had a relationship with? Uh, actually, the, the guys that I was really on, um, you know, DB-wise, secondary-wise, safety-wise, um, they, one, have not signed yet, um, and so that process is still going. Gotcha. Um, and then they didn't, we didn't sign any safeties um, in the class. Gotcha. Uh, but, you know, you're involved, as according to you're involved with Quincy Wiggins and um, you know, Demario Toll and those guys, I, who I think is going to have a huge impact on the, for LSU. Good deal. Yeah. Quincy had a scare the other day, I think, on a scooter or something. I think he's okay, but he had a little... Really? I have not been following. Yeah, a little accident, I I'm, believe. Well, I'm sure if a man um, of his stature, he's, he can brush it off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've joked with everyone, Coach, when I was that age, I used to wear, like, sweatpants under my jeans and three shirts to try to look like I didn't weigh 140 pounds. This, this kid is, uh, what is he, six... Six, uh, 275 or he something. Look, he, he looks the part, man. He <laughs> looks the part. Just and he's explosive, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, I joke he could pick you up by your head and just kind of, <laughs> you know, do like that. Um, so, and then down the stretch there. So, the Alabama game, which, um, man, was right there for you guys to take. Yes. Uh, you know, just one touchdown, you know, could have won the game there. But um, I, I guess uh, there's no such thing, perhaps, as moral victories. But you had to be proud, I guess, of, of that game and some of the other games down the stretch. I was proud of the guys. You know, I was proud of the, the resiliency. I was proud of how they fought, um, the energy that they played with. And they were having fun. You know, and that was the, that was the message, you know, have fun. Um, and for us, it was a little bit easier because the guys that we were counting on defensively were seniors. And so... It didn't matter who was a head coach next year anyway. They weren't going to be here, yeah. you know. So they were putting on tape that they needed for the next adventure. And so, you know, Damone, you have Neil, you have Glenn. All those guys are playing, you know, even Darren Evans uh, ended up yeah. stepping up for us at corner. You know, those guys are trying to – they need this film. This is their resume moving forward. And so uh, they were playing for something. So it was easy for us to kind of keep moving and having those guys having a reason to play. Yeah. Yeah. So the season ends, the regular season ends, uh, Max Johnson, who is now at Texas A&M, throws a game-winning touchdown against <laughs> Texas A&M. Uh, and then we basically, as media, don't see the team from, what's that, two days after Thanksgiving until you guys showed up at this Texas Bowl mm. uh, in, in early January. So there's this rodeo event in Houston. <laughs> fun, good event at the Texas Bowl. It was <laughs> yeah. fun. Yeah, the guys had fun. The guys competed. Yeah, Jerry Jenkins, man, he, he brought it home in the, he did. <laughs> in the rodeo bowl for LSU there. Good old, good old guy from Gina. But it, it's, it was really like uh, you used to watch Unsolved Mysteries as a kid, you know, yes, Robert yes. Stack. You know, <laughs> do, 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 do. So, like, who's here? So, like, I'm here. I'm like, well, there's Durante Jones. Okay, he made it. Uh, Andre Carter's here. Jake Peets is here. And obviously Brad Davis is here. And then the, the depth chart comes out on a Sunday morning, a cold Sunday morning in Houston. <laughs> And there's 38 guys uh, yeah. that are like scholarship players on this roster. Yes. I mean, and you're, and you're over there trying to make the best of the situation. And, oh, by the way, John Troy Kirkland, who we covered in high school, a wonderful kid, but mm -hmm. hadn't played quarterback in five years, he goes out there. Yes. So this, this just had to be a, 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 just an adventure, huh? It was different. <laughs> <laughs> it was different. You know, we talked about um, – so before we get to the roster aspect of it and that depth chart, because um, I got calls when that, when that came out on Sunday, I was like, oh, it must have been released, you know, because up, up until that point, no one knew, you know, no one knew who we had. Um, but I will say this, that uh, rodeo event, you know, it became, a, it was a competition, right? And, um, you know, you have some of the guys on the team that that's not their thing, you know, coach, that's, you know, that's the Cowboys, we're not doing that. But that's the, what you saw, which I loved about the players, right? You saw that guys who thought they were kind of like too cool to do that kind of stuff when the competition started and we actually lost the first competition. And then, you know, we won the second one, right? And then we lost the third. And then you saw as it got like close to winning this thing, other players came out of the stands and was like, oh no, uh-uh. And it, it was fun to see, right? It was fun to see, you know, guys like uh, neighbors, Malik neighbors came out and Jay Ward was like, oh, and, and you, those are the 
or other things from Cowboys, right? But the competition, <laughs> and you just show guys like yeah. competing. But you, the roster comes out, and uh, you get the phone calls, and uh, that's who we have, you know. And, and when you look at it, and I did an interview before the game, and we're going down, and we have uh, literally two scholarship linebackers on the entire roster. You have two scholarship corners on the entire roster, and you know, uh, the uh, the interview was like, uh, so who do you play if they go down? The next guy, the next guy up, you know. Well, who is that? Well, he's a walk-on. He's, you know, he's busting his butt. He's working hard, you know, and that's who we have, you know. Um, yeah. But I, I will say, you know, it was, it was, it was different. It was challenging. But guys, they didn't, they didn't blink, you know. They didn't blink, and you had guys who were third and fourth string guys that had never played before getting reps in practice, you know, like a Hunter Faust, you know, and Aaron Benfield. Yeah. Those, you know, you, you're talking about these guys are getting huge reps in practice. And then, you know, um, Mike Jones, who was now having to go back and learn the Mike position, a different Mike, right? He was trying to learn the Mike in that 4-2-5 in the sub package. Now he's trying to learn the Mike in more of a 4-3 base package, right? So he's seeing more 12 personnel, more two back things. And then he misses five days because of COVID. And so now he's learning a new position, but he's missed five days. And so he comes back really a day before we leave. Um, wow. And so, you, you know, but, but again, he didn't, he didn't blink. You know, he went out there and he tried to do what we asked him to do to the best of his ability. Um, but guys play hard. And like I told the guys, no one cares, you know, that from our last game with Texas A&M, we lost seven of those starters going into the bowl game. So you lose eight before the bowl, before the bye, and then after the last game, you lose another seven, right? For various reasons. Um, sure. But no one, like I told you guys, no one cares about that. You know, they're gonna, they're anticipating and expecting us to have better talent than our opponent just because. Yeah. So you got to go out and here's your opportunity. Yeah. So. Well, hats off to Kansas State. Yeah. They won yeah. the bowl. They yeah. sold them act like they beat the 2019 LSU Tigers, <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's that is what it is. Uh, despite the way the game went, and, and talking about guys who are going to be on this LSU team uh, next year moving forward, BJ Ojolari was a problem. Uh, yes, I for mean, those guys. the way he played the last four or five games, I mean, was phenomenal. Um, it, he just shows you who he who he is and what he's capable of. Um, I thought he showed how diverse he was because we even the second half we even had him in coverage. A couple of times, you know, and, and really I think that's what he is. He's a stand up, uh, more of an outside linebacker, TJ Watt ish uh, player um, rather than just rushing for. I mean, he's athletic. Why not use his athletic ability to rush the passer and drop in coverage? He can do different things um, where he can get one on ones. But BJ is, and he's just a great kid as well, you know, and he's quiet. And so you see him off the field, you would never think that this guy is who he is on the field. He's like a different guy on the field. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that about BJ. Yeah. And speaking of Andre Carter, Carter too, obviously Mason Smith is going to be a, a, yes. a beast, is a beast Yes. moving forward. Um, what, what, what is his future like? Uh, probably a first round draft pick. <laughs> you know, yeah. Mason, uh, Mason had, I thought was having a heck of a rookie season before the injury. Uh, I say rookie, I'm sorry, freshman CEO yeah, right. before the injury. Um, and then, you know, his first game back, well, he would have been done for the season had it not been for the bowl game. Uh, and so we were able to get him back for the bowl game, which we needed him for the bowl game. And uh, it says a lot about him that he went out there. Exactly, exactly. And you have everyone in his ear at that time. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Mason is, for his size, he's explosive. He has a good understanding of the game. Um, he's so quick. He is so quick off the ball. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to see what he does in the future. Now, again, I, I don't. First round draft pick, I think, is in his near future. Jaqueline, Coach Carter told me, has flashed. Yes. But I bet he said he, he rode him probably harder than any player that he coached. Yes. Because he wants him to be more consistent. Yes. And not be that, flashy. Dre is right on point with that. And you have to be with Jay Roy, you know. Um, he has so much potential and so much talent. Uh, he just has to hone it on in and continue to focus. Um, you know, he had a stretch where he was rolling pretty well. And I think as long as he's in that groove, you got to keep him in that groove, and then he's got to mature in that way and moving forward. And I think he can. I think he will. I think he wants to be good. Um, and having a taste of that last year helps for him moving forward. Tell me about Pig Cage. <laughs> the third, right? Pig Cage yeah, the third? Yeah, <laughs> feisty. So, <clears throat> you know, Pig transferred uh, from Nickel State. 
you would you could not have told Pig that he was not 6'1", 215, 220. You know, uh, he walks in the room, he thinks he's the biggest guy in the room. Uh, huge heart. He's tough as nails, never backs down. Uh, to think about a guy who comes in, he just wants to show that, hey, I belong at this level. And he was patient all year, you know, special teams, trying to find his way. And then Alabama's his first start, all right? Really his first action <laughs> because, you know, and so now, and, and because, you know, we said, you know, we didn't have Cordell Flott. And so Mike Jones had to be that guy. Well, on third down, we got to cover and blitz. Mike Jones can't be covering these receivers. So, you know, we went more zero, but Pig was just out there. And, you know, I thought he did a good job uh, for what we asked him to do. Um, but I like Pig Cage. Pig is, Pig is feisty. He's, uh, he takes the game serious, you know. Um, and he has a, a lot of confidence in himself. Um, and you can see that. And I thought he came out of Kansas State. Now he's starting, right? Now he's our starting Sam linebacker, right? And so, <laughs> you know, um, because of Mike Jones had to go inside. So now Pig is started. And I thought he started out blazing in that Kansas State game and, and the bowl game, you know. And I was happy for him. I was really happy for his success. And, uh, you know, Pig's not going anywhere, in my opinion. I think he's going to be there. He's going to continue to battle. And he's going to find a home. Yeah. yeah. I said a lot that uh, you took two guys that were at Nichols, and they played prominent roles. I mean, with Darren. They, they, were, starting. Yeah. Yeah, they were starters for us, and uh, especially that last bowl game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Demarius McGee, who was a true freshman, started that game um, for us in the bowl game. Uh, you know, Greg Penn, who was a true freshman for us, started at linebacker for us. Uh, so, you know, you'd be surprised what, you know, those guys are just waiting for their opportunity. Um, and another kid, uh, Matthew Lengua, we covered him at Catholic Point KP. It's, yes. It seemed like we heard a lot that he was going to be a factor in that bowl game, but it, it doesn't seem like, didn't seem like we saw him a whole lot, but he was a true freshman and whatnot. Uh, what, what kind of, I mean, he's going to work very hard to get out there. What, 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 what kind of future does he have? I think Matt has a future there. I, I think so. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's different. It's a different game for him. Um, you know, and coming out of high school to learn that safety position is tough. There's a lot of calls that have to be made. You become the quarterback. Yeah. Um, so it's really tough for, I, I think, a, a, a freshman to come in at safety um, and, and really play and understand the defense, understand how to get li guys lined up. And I thought Matt was getting better with that. Um, and I, I think he's going to have a bright future at LSU. Uh, we didn't see a whole lot of Derek Stingley this year, but it, it doesn't seem like it's hurting him in the uh, – the draft projections. Right. Uh, thoughts on him at the next level? He's going to be successful. You know, Sting has a, a certain skill set that allows him, that would allow him to be successful in the next level. You know, he has size. He looks like a safety. You know, he's about 205. Uh, he's probably going to be about 198 maybe by the pro day or by the combine. Um, you know, he can run like the wind. Um, so he's, he has length. He's explosive. He has great ball skills. He can track and locate. Uh, all the things that you're looking for at that next level in a, in a corner. And so I have no doubt that he's going to be successful. One guy who is coming back, a bit of a surprise to a lot of people, but uh, a late Christmas present in <laughs> Micah Baskerville is going to be back at LSU yes. this year. What yes. did you see out of him this year in his development? He's come a long way. Yes, he has. And, and, and part of Mike's development, I think it was just he just matured over the year. Um, and I, again, I think that's a testament to Blake Baker and his relationship. Um, and uh, you can see Mike from the first half of the season playing, uh, you know, he just wanted to make plays, um, whether that was in the scheme or out of the scheme, you know, <laughs> you know. And then what you saw is he started to hone in, he started to learn the playbook, and he started to say, okay, this is where I fit in. These are the plays I got to make. And you can see him and Damone really developed yeah. a rapport with one another. Batman and, and Robin. Exactly, there. exactly. Yeah. And again, I think he ended the season on a high note. And to his, uh, to his credit, you know, he was battling a, a high ankle sprain um, the last three weeks of the season. So we had to monitor his practice reps, but he was still coming in and watching film and trying to get it mentally, you know, um, just to help us out and just to, you know, continue to put his, effort, put, his, put his resume on tape. And I thought he did a great job with that. And, you know, I think Mike's going to have a good year next year. Durante Jones, a few more things with him. I've really enjoyed uh, just listening to this, and I'm going to go back and watch it myself just <laughs> to, uh, to, to remind myself all the great things you've said today. Um, you taking this job, do, do you feel like you were ready for it? Do you feel like you learned on the job? How do you think this experience went for you, being a defensive coordinator at this level? Yes, I, I think I was ready for it. Um, and I think with any job, you're always learning on the job. Um, you know, but it's, uh, 
it was a great experience. Um, you know, it, was, it didn't have the outcome that we had all hoped at the end of the year. Um, but I would definitely take the things I've learned here and the experience here and, and, and help it in my, in, my, in my career. Well, you know how funny uh, we all can be, media fans can be. Early in the year, the opinion may have not been the same opinion late in the year. True. And late in the year, I heard from a lot of fans, well, you know what? I think he deserves a shot, you know, to be, right. to stick around, to be the defensive coordinator on Brian Kelly's staff, um, or certainly someone else's staff uh, moving forward. Uh, so did, I, I know you guys are real insulated in that building and whatnot, and, uh, but did, did, you, did you meet fans? Did you, you know, interact with people who say, hey, man, you did a good job this year? Uh, you know, actually, especially our home fans, you know, coming out, because uh, that's when you have a chance to interact. Not, well, accidentally, because you were leaving the stadium going home. Yeah. And, you know, fans would be out there still hanging out after the game, and um, it was nothing but great, great responses, you know, positive uh, guys that enjoyed it. Um, you know, so that was encouraging. Um, and so, you know, that, that felt good, you know, that they, you know, they, we're putting out a product that they're enjoying, you know, and they're excited to see. So that felt good. Do you have any uh, impressions of Brian Kelly? Do you, do you think he'll do well here? Um, what do you feel about the new regime moving forward? I think his, he has a proven track record, and I think he's a, he's a winner one, right? And uh, I had a chance to meet uh, Coach Kelly before he, he got here, actually. Um, and I don't have any doubt that he'll be successful here. I think uh, he's been successful wherever, everywhere else he's been. Um, you know, he's going to get in, he's going to survey, um, and he's going to make his adjustments. One thing I have noticed since he's been here uh, is just he's going to focus on holding people accountable, um, which is always a good thing. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. And. He's got weapons. You're on the defensive side of the ball, but obviously being in a practice every day, you had yes. to see Malik Neighbors and yes. Brian Thomas and yes. Keyshawn Boutte and all these receivers. Yes, and the receivers, I mean, they were young. You know, we had a, a, a group of young receivers, I thought, that are very, very talented. And you can see that's, this is the next wave of the LSU tradition of having these receivers, you know. Um, and Malik showed it, you know. Um, BT showed it. And so, and then you have Keyshawn, I mean, Keyshawn Boutte, I mean, that's... He's yeah. just special, you know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, You threw Besh in there, too, who just... Oh, he's just like lined. a receiver. Yeah. He's like a receiver. I mean, he's a matchup nightmare. So, you know, they have some weapons and some tools back there, um, and the, even at the running back position. You know, um, I believe Corey Kine is still there, right? I mean, I, yeah. yeah, so... Um, we think. I mean, things change so quickly <laughs> these days. You know, this transfer portal has become just... That uh, is true. It's an, becoming free agency. An eject button for, yeah. for everybody. And Which is unfortunate. Yeah, well... I mean, we, we all know what it's like to be younger in peer pressure, right? Uh, somebody, somebody cool starts wearing a ridiculous pair of jeans and everyone wants that right. pair of jeans Correct. and whatnot. It just kind of seems like guys that, that were supposed to be happy on like a national championship Georgia team, we just won it all and I contributed and I'm leaving. I yeah. mean, it's, uh, it's wacky. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It is. So I'll just let we'll just, we'll just keep, <laughs> keep it there. But, um, and, uh, and, and another guy real quick, this is what I do, Coach. I mean, yeah. You play yeah. defense against me. I'm just, you know, draw play, you know, throwing deep. Uh, so <laughs> Jared Small is another guy who oh. stuck around forever. Kind of like a Miles Brennan, right? They're, they're kind of similar in the fact they've been here so long. They've been waiting for their chance. They've had injuries that have taken them out and so forth. Heartbroken. Uh, you know, Jared Small, you meet him in, when I got here in the spring. Um, I mean, he battled. He battled his butt off. He earned the starting linebacker job. Um, and to see what happened to him just a couple of days before his first game where he would have came out and started it against UCLA it was just, it was heartbreaking for you. I felt for the kid um, and he's fighting back, he's getting healthy, you know, but you know what, he, he always had a smile on his face. Even, even, even afterwards, you know, every time you see him, he has a smile, he's, it looks like he's enjoying life, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm hoping and praying that there's so much more for him um, and I think he have a great opportunity um, to hopefully go to the next level. Um, and if and if he doesn't, he's going to be successful in whatever he does. Um, but he's fighting. He's fighting hard to to have that opportunity. And so, you know, I told him I help him any way possible. But you got to love that kid. Yeah. All right, we're going to end here with Durante Jones. So, Durante apparently is a whiskey connoisseur, you'd say, <laughs> or uh, sip. 
Sip with the meal. We're not talking about, you know, <laughs> passing out in the, in the parking lot right, here. Right. But uh, there's some guys uh, that I know well. I believe Matt Anderson and those, those great guys. One team, one podcast. They started <laughs> kind of this thing, Whiskey Club or something like that, yeah. where, where you were, you know, or, or ordained president of the Whiskey Club or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, it, it, was, it was crazy. It's uh, So I, I'm in town, and all of a sudden, um, I get reports. I get a, my, my agent tells me, hey, you, got a, you have a bourbon club? I said, no, I don't have a bourbon. And he sends me, like, it was a T-shirt, right? It was Durante Jones Bourbon Club. And I was like, I don't know what that is, <laughs> you know? And, and lo and behold, I ended up meeting Matt um, maybe a couple weeks later. I was just eating dinner at City Port. And uh, I guess they were doing a podcast over there, and he came up, and we started to chat. And uh, come to find out that's who he was, and we laughed and joked about it. And, you know, I've had a chance to participate in, I guess judging the uh, best old fashions in Baton Rouge. Okay. Um, I was one of the judges on the finalists for the for the for the final competition um, that was held at Stabs. Um, but no, it was it was it was fun. It was good. They were great people, and uh, you know, I, I just um, I was just humbled in that they would even do something like that. Yeah. Um, but no, it was just it was fun. It was good. Uh, I appreciate all your time. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, it was great talking to you. Thank we you. We wish you the best of luck. Appreciate Any idea where you're going to end up on the record right now? Any idea? You think no, you I... could be coaching next year? Yes. Okay. Yes, I will be. Okay. Coach O, he's got to get back in eventually too, huh? He, he... I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's um, he has a passion for it. You know, you know whether it be a consultant role or anything like that. I don't know, but um, he definitely loves the game. Um, and, and he loves D-line play. And so, uh, you know, I, I give him about a year, maybe call him the back. Gotcha. Yeah. Can only spend so much time on the beach, right? <laughs> Going to be out there on the practice field shouting at those <laughs> defensive linemen eventually. Durante Jones, I'm Jacques Doucet. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.